All right, guys, I can't believe I'm going to do this. It is 1.47 p.m. on February 18th. I was doing a little research to share a video with you guys talking about the retroactive billing rules when you're enrolling in Medicare as a new provider, and this article popped up. So I am going to go through this article with you. Um, please bear with me. I'm not the best reader on a public forum like this, but I'm going to do the best that I can. I'll also link to the article down below, so if you don't want to listen to me, read it. Go look at it yourself. But this is really interesting, like incredibly interesting to the point where I could be taking a nap right now, but I'm going to stop my nap to come and talk to you guys about this. So you can see the headline CMS settles enrollment case about retroactive billing over 30 days. I've always been under the impression that we have 30 days prior to the effective date to submit a claim for services delivered to a Medicare beneficiary when you are submitting either a reassignment of benefits or a new enrollment. So this basically says CMS has agreed to pay a physical therapy practice $55,000 in December in a December settlement that's at the intersection of claims and enrollment and again runs into the question of how far CMS can go to enforce payment re requirements not rooted in regulations or law. So it's kind of a, you know, their interpretation of what the law says right now. The physical therapists are being paid because two providers, um, two provider types are permitted to bill Medicare for services provided up to one year before their enrollment application is approved, notwithstanding a March provision in the Medicare program integrity manual an attorney says. So we see, quote, when we see revisions to the Medicare manual that didn't used to affect us and now they do, I'm starting to do the research on when, why, and how those revisions or MLM Matters articles have come about. This is by an attorney, uh, um, Rachel, Rachel, Mart Martin. Sorry, I don't know that name. Uh, the Forbes Law Group in Overland Park, Kansas. Quote, is a policy being created without the proper rulemaking process? I have seen no so many examples of that in the past year or so. And then this, this is what showed up in Google search when I was looking for this. When providers and suppliers enroll in Medicare, they're permitted to bill for services performed before the date of their enrollment approval. Up to a point, Martin says. In other words, they're able to retroactively bill for their services if the 855 enrollment application is accepted. Providers and suppliers indicate on the enrollment forms when they want their date to begin. Uh, until 2009, the maximum retroactive effective date was a year for most providers and suppliers because of the one-year timely filing deadline, she says, which, just so you guys understand, if you are already a supplier and you submit a claim for a date of service, you have up to one year from the date of service to submit that claim. If you go beyond a year, you, ex you the timely filing limit is expired and you can't receive reimbursement. So from the date of service, you have up to a year to submit that claim if you're already a contracted provider. Uh, it almost sounds too good to be true, except that CMS uh, in a in a 2009 regulation said that physicians and non-physician practitioners could not request an enrollment date earlier than 30 days before their application date. Now, this is interesting. Here's where physical therapy practice runs into trouble with CMS. When the three physical therapists submitted enrollment applications, the 855I, and reassignment applications, the 855R, so the practice could bill on their behalf, they requested an effective date five months retroactive to their enrollment application date. Because they were not limited to 30 days, Martin says, the Medicare administrative contractor disagreed, nixing the five day request or five month request. The MAC relied on a March 2019 provision in the Medicare Program Integrity Manual, which added physical therapy, occupational, th I'm sorry, physical and occupational therapists to a list of suppliers that are limited to a 30 day before the enrollment date takes effect. CMS announced the change in the Medicare Transmittal 865, but there is no corresponding regulation anchoring it, she says. 
CMS is flat out wrong about the retroactive billing date for physical therapists without a regulation to back up the Medicare manual, Martin contends. CMS can't split a significant payment matter into a Medicare manual, not split, slip. Gosh, goodness gracious. Uh, into a Medicare manual when it hasn't first been established by law or regulation. The Supreme Court ruled last year in Azar versus Alina Health Services et al. So physical therapists are not NPPs. That's interesting because it took me a couple of years to realize that. Nancy Beckley actually pointed that out to me. Um, we are not NPEs. We're not physicians. Um, we are, I believe, suppliers. But anyway, the 2009 regulation that introduced retroactive billing applied to the physicians, medical doctors, doctors of osteopathic medicine and podiatrists, and non-physician practitioners, including physician assistants, nurse, uh, certified nurse midwives, clinical psychologists, nurse practitioners, anesthesiologists, assistants, audiologists, certified registered nurses, nurse uh, anesthetists, clinical social workers, psychological billing, independently speech language pathologists, and registered dietitians or nutritional professionals. Marting explained in her November 13th appeal to the Department Appeals Board. Um, although the proposed regulation intended included occupational and physical therapists and private practice, in the list of MPPs, uh, when a commenter pointed out that physical and occupational therapists are, are, are not considered MPPs, CMS removed them from the final regulation. As if to underscore that CMS knew the addition of the provider or supplier to the 30-day retroactive max had to be done by regulation, that's the route it took when it added ambul ambulance suppliers to the list in 2014. Some other MACs interpret the retroactive billing the same way she does, that physical and occupational therapists are not bound to the 30 days, but what mattered in the case was the MAC for the therapy practice wouldn't recognize claims going back five months for the three physical therapists. Marting appealed, uh, however, affected a CMS attorney, quote, we got settlement offers on all three she says we had to enter into an agreement that the effective date would be and then we with we withdrew our appeals after the affected claims were resubmitted and paid the physical therapist will receive a collective 55,000 which represents payments for the services dated five months before they filed their enrollment application Marty encourages providers not expressly included in the 30-day limit to address this when they enroll. If you need your enrollment effective date to be prior to the application date, consider calling a manager of the MAC enrollment process to explain the basis and authority for doing so. Um, that's the biggest, best opportunity to get approval for the retroactive billing date without the time and expense of an appeal. Providers can also submit a letter making the request and explaining it in their application, even on the provider enrollment uh, chain and ownership system. So, really interesting. Um, like I said, typically we're looking at 30 days prior for being able to treat a patient um, and hold those claims until your application has been approved. But it seems, once again, that there is just stuff out there that hasn't been finalized quite yet. And it should be interesting to see where this goes moving forward. But for those of you who are looking at submitting your Medicare application or if you have questions about submitting your application, go ahead and take a look at this thumbnail right here. I'll post some videos about it. I've got tons of video content on the channel. I also have a digital course that walks you through the Medicare application process if you're a PT, OT, or SLP. Otherwise, I wish you guys the best.